हे गाइस हेलो एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग हाय हाय हेलो हेलो पीपल सो गाइस टुडे वी आर डूइंग द सेशन ओनली ऑन यूट्यूब नॉट इन जूम सो यू ऑल नो नीड टू जॉइन ऑन जूम हे गाइस गाइस ऑडिबल गाइस एम आई ऑडिबल जस्ट टेल मी इन द चैट बॉक्स क्विकली हाय 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 शुभम हाय हाय रंजन minute plus today okay guys guys you can drop your opinion in the chat box that what uh, next uh, boot camp you want from us what you you want uh, us to come up with hell so yeah okay guys thank you thank you so much for the confirmation that i am audible and visible clearly and i hope so okay okay guys thank you thank you so yeah guys um, let me introduce uh, you all to myself so my name is ana i am one of the co team member of let's upgrade and i am not a trainer but yeah our trainer is saurabh sir but yeah i am here is to guide you all like how to mark your attendance and get the certificate uh, after completing this uh, boot camp and guys sorry for the inconvenience but there is a slight change in the in this duration in the duration of this boot camp uh, that it is that ki we have reduced the uh, hours and uh, we have extended the days now this boot camp is for 5 days and the hour is 1 hour or 1.5 hour 1.5 hour and yeah not for 2 hours and uh, the days is for 5 from 3 to we have extended it to 5 do you have any notes Ye yes guys we have no provided the notes uh, there is a link wait let me share you all my screen and when i will tell you everything about the uh, boot camp attendance and everything but once a second guys yeah so i hope my screen is visible to you all android app development using okay or after this yes guys uh, so uh, and what about aws training we will come up with it uh, surely we will align it or uh, share subtitles please guys uh, my screen is visible now okay thank you so guys here in the description box here you can see all in one documentation for flutter click on this link you will be redirected uh, redirected to our uh, notes page and everything we have a uh, store here like just let it load there is a mistake guys one second Okay, we share my screen again. Yeah. So I I hope my screen is visible now. Yeah. So guys, uh, the link I have changed in the description box. Now uh, the there is a link in the description box. Uh, name Flutter uh, all in one documentation for Flutter. Just go on that link, and uh, you will be redirected. here in the description you will get the link and you will be redirected to this page and 
uh, you have, have uploaded like everything the notes and everything is there and also we have step by step process like how to complete the bootcamp and all everything like how to mark your attendance how to get the certificate and our uh, referral uh, policy and everything we have we have also we also have whatsapp community so you can join there and get all the updates and all zoom link is there is no zoom link uh, we are not streaming from zooms guys so uh, on this youtube only we'll get everything and uh, also here we have attendance link click on the link you will be redirected uh, to this un enrollment page scroll your page here you can see mark attendance option mark your attendance on the rate on a scale 0 to 10 how much you like the session please do share it with your friends and whoever is uh, in this tech field and now i will give 10 on 10 also we have feedback uh, column like how how much uh, what do you like from us or what improvement you want from us everything you can submit here then you can submit your assignment then reload your page here you can see progress bar it will increase day by day and when it will be 50 uh, 50 or above you will get generate op a certificate option here beside the progress bar so on day five you can download your certificate uh, from this link itself on this page everything will get the youtube link and mark attendance option and certificate also we have whatsapp community so you can join us there we also have telegram community you can join there and get all the updates every reminder about everything and we also have student ambassador program guys the link is there again in the description box the batch is starting from first march and uh, you can submit the form and enroll enroll for it before 29th feb we have uh, like you can get incentives uh, swags uh, id and a great chance like to work with let's a great team we also uh, provide uh, like uh, you also get chance to attend workshops so yeah this uh, go you can uh, check out this page everything we have mentioned here and please make sure that you are enrolling for our uh, next uh, student ambassador program the batch is starting for first march uh, so please guys look into it and on third uh, sorry on 29th feb we are uh, there is a workshop uh, uh, from one of the uh, team uh, ex team member of microsoft please, so please guys enroll for it and yeah so now i will st uh, stop my screen and hand over the session to saurabh sir so yeah guys if you have any doubt anything you can ask us in the description box sorry in the chat box you can should we mark our attendance yeah yeah you can mark our attendance which website is not opening just tell me i will share all the links in uh, in the chat uh, okay, so guys, now I will hand over the session to Sir. So I hope you all have a great time. So, good evening, guys. Good evening once again, all the guys who were chatting till now. So, good evening to all of you, and I welcome you all to this day one of Flutter Essentials. Now, this course is going to be of five days in which we're going to be learning a lot of Flutter. So first of all, I'm like back on YouTube maybe after one month. So good evening to all of you. OK, I missed training you guys. OK, so now, guys, first of all, I, I, I saw a lot of people asking about are there any prerequisite for this Flutter course? So first of all, if you know any basic programming language, like, for example, if you know JavaScript, if you know C++, that is completely fine. That is enough. You don't have to know a lot of development like you don't have to have a lot of development knowledge to start with flutter if you know basics of programming that is completely enough to start with flutter because we are starting from scratch i'll show you how to do the installation how to do the setup how to run your first app in your mobile phone or in emulator but i'll also show you how to do it in mobile phone don't worry about that and then we'll go ahead and start learning how to put images audio right all of that stuff text field how to read data so a lot of things you know, any programming language is fine. You just have to have the knowledge of like some kind of programming language, like loops, conditions, arrays, objects. If you know that much, that is enough. That's it. OK, so let's get started, guys. So for all the people who know what Flutter is already, no issues. For all the people who don't know what is Flutter, we are starting from scratch. So don't worry. OK, so once again, guys, good evening. And let's start with Flutter. So first of all, before we start, what exactly is Flutter? So guys, Flutter is nothing but it is simply 
what do you say uh sdk when i say sdk sdk basically stands for software development kit or you can also say it's a framework so either you can consider it a software development kit or you can also consider it a framework which is basically used to create interactive and beautiful when i say beautiful i mean it interactive and beautiful uis for almost every kind of device not only mobile application guys you can use flutter to develop any ui for any kind of device ranging from mobile to desktop for web for any kind of device like for example if you go on their site you can see directly build apps for any screen you can see web you can see mobile phone you can see desktop anything so by using flutter so now that's what it is by using flutter you can develop apps for any screen for any platform so it's nothing but it's a software development kit or a framework provided by google so that you can use it and make interactive ui or interactive front end applications for any kind of screen that's it that's what flutter is and today we are going to basically see from where to download this software development kit or framework how to set this up in our pc and how to basically do all the other setups that flutter needs and then we'll start with the development okay all of you are with me understood guys what flutter is and one more thing very important to understand before we move ahead as i said it is cross platform it basically means okay it is cr cross platform so when i mention it is i'm very bad at spelling so when i mention it is cl cross platform guys so basically the first thing you can develop apps for any screens second there is a lot of question going on like okay does this develop apps for what do you say android as well as ios and mobile apps so yes whatever app you create in flutter will run for both ios and android and not only it is limited to this as i mentioned it's cross cross platform it will run as a web application it will also run as a desktop application for windows so it covers all the platforms and the best part is you write code only once that means it has a single code base now normally like normally if you are doing native development like for example you're using android studio and you're writing java code or kotlin code you're only developing app for that particular platform that is android platform right if you only want to develop an app for ios you might be using swift if you only want to develop an let's say app for web you have to use html css javascript right but if you use flutter you're writing code only once but you're developing for all the other platforms so that's what flutter is going to do for you now it's not like uh, is it basically uh, showing that okay we don't have to use anything else it's not like that you can still master all the other native development technologies but for now as of now flutter is one of the best tools for ios and android if you want to develop mobile applications currently it's not like really great for web or desktop because a lot of other frameworks and native development techniques are there like if you want to go for web development html css javascript is still better but for mobile applications it is one of the best nowadays so you can always go for it so yeah it is very powerful and for now mobile application it has covered like the whole market it's on top right now but for our, for the other things like web desktop it is still reaching there because the other things are very powerful so to cover up flutter has to come up with some really cool features in future okay so let's go guys let's go now we know what flutter is it's simply a cross platform software development kit which helps you to develop apps for multiple platforms by writing only a single code base so now then guys let's get ahead and let's start with the setup so to start with the setup come here and just click on get started okay and now here you'll simply see windows mac os linux so basically right now which kind of pc or which platform you're using so in this case i'll select windows okay as because i'm using windows so as soon as you select windows here you go get the flutter sdk so this is the one now it will take time so i have already downloaded it because it's like around 1 gb it's around 930 mb so once you guys also download it it will take a little time so you just click on it okay and let it download so i'm not downloading it right now it will take a lot of time so it just click on it it will take around 10 20 minutes depending on the internet speed to download once you download this you will get something like this let me show you my download folders okay so here we go you will then get something like this i hope you can see it guys i hope you can see it here we go flutter windows you will basically get a zip like this okay i'm deleting the extracted one let me just cancel it 
okay so you'll get simply a zip like this then perform an extraction so then after that you'll get something like this after performing the extraction you will get something like this okay and once you have extracted it i hope you know how to extract you have this folder and this is the important folder that we want this flutter folder okay just take this you can put it anywhere okay you can put it anywhere but personally i prefer to copy it or cut it and paste it in my c drive here see straight away directly in my c drive you can also paste it anywhere but i prefer it here because it's like a software right it's like an environment that i'm putting in my pc so that's why i would like to always put it here but you can put it anywhere okay is it cleared guys first step cleared downloading the sdk okay downloading the sdk and then after that simply extracting it and getting the flutter folder putting it in the c drive or anywhere you like it's totally up to you so that is basically the first step get the flutter sdk after that it's very important to update your path once you do it then you can run flutter commands from anywhere in your pc and run your project also from anywhere in your pc or create flutter projects anywhere in your pc okay so that's why you have to update your path now now no need to read this i'll show you how to do it so once you have got it what you have to do is go in the flutter folder go in the bin folder okay and then copy this whole path copy this whole bin path and then simply search for environment variables okay once you search for it you have something like this just click on this environment variables button and in the user variable section not in the system variable guys in the user variable section click on path okay and click on new and here or either click on new or the other way is you can just click on edit and you can just add a path now you can see i already have added that path but if you want to add new just click on new here and paste your path that c flutter bin path just paste it here and you're good to go okay so i already have it here i'm not going to put it but you guys have to put this is that cleared everyone cleared with the second step so that was basically the second step let me just open it here we go update your path okay once you're done with this okay once you're done with this you also have to install something called as vs code because that is the code editor that we are going to use okay that is the, now again it's not important to have vs code you can also use any other editor but flutter even flutter suggests that you should use vs code because it has really really cool extensions to develop the application and running it and handling it okay so install an editor called as vs code now i hope that for a modern developers you might be already having it but again if you don't have it just go ahead it's a simple cool lightweight code editor it's a very very powerful code editor so again depending on your os just in my case i'll just click on windows and then here it will start downloading it i don't need it because i already have it so i'm going to cancel it once you install it just simply once you download it just simply double click just check all the paths just basically agree to everything and install and once you once it's done simply you can search for vs code it should appear like this okay now you have vs code chrome you'll be already having because flutter also says to have that but again it's not important okay once you're done with path guys once you're done with path what you have to do is so path is important vs code is not important but i'm just suggesting you to have it okay once you're done with that just open your terminal okay just open your command prompt or terminal or whatever you call it let me just make it a little bigger okay like that and here then run flutter run flutter if you get something like this that means path is properly updated and you have your flutter installed if this doesn't work if it gives you flutter is not recognized as command or something like that try restarting your pc once and if after that also it's not happening that means there is some problem in the download or in the path but this should be something that should be running flutter yeah, powershell is also fine anything cmd powershell anything now once you are done with this you should run ah sorry command called as flutter doctor you have to run this command it will take a minute it will show you if all the things are settled up in your pc or not now see it's telling me that okay fine you have flutter flutter is installed android toolchain done chrome i have it 
it also requires visual studio but only if you're planning on to develop desktop applications if you're not planning to develop desktop applications you don't have to install it guys it's telling me that you don't have it but fine i don't need it because i'm not planning on to develop desktop applications but yeah android studio i need it so i'll show you how to install it don't worry vs code yes i have it connected devices i all normally use flutter a lot so i have it but i'll show you how to do it and all the basic stuff will be there okay so don't worry about visual studio guys you only need it if you want to develop desktop application otherwise you don't need it so don't worry about this x here red mark here don't worry okay is that clear guys everyone run flutter doctor and see if you have all the basic stuff the only things that should be fine here is flutter android studio and uh, initially no need of connected devices and uh, that's it that's all you need okay now why do we need android studio like as i said we are not going to be doing what do you say working natively on android if i'm using flutter why do i need android studio i need android studio for the basic support that flutter requires and also android studio helps me to create emulators okay now before i tell you emulator let me answer one question i know react so react native of flutter what should i consider see both are fine but it's like flutter gives you a lot of what do you say native development approach flutter gives you a better native development approach it has access to all the native features of your mobile phones right that's why if you tell me if you give me option of react native and flutter i will always go for flutter because it provides you a lot of beautiful widgets it's a lot easier to develop so as if you compare it to react native i'm not saying react native is stuff because i have also made what do you say applications in react native but if you compare both i will go for flutter but if you know react yes you can go for react native as well as you can go for flutter but i also after react first learned flutter then after that i learned react native as well i developed applications in that but still flutter is my favorite okay because it as i said it provides you a native development approach it has access to all the native features of the mobile phones when i say native that basically means uh, what should i say uh so uh to the core for example notification system is a native of your mobile application right like for example a web application runs on chrome so chrome is the application on your phone but that web application is not in your phone chrome is just loading it from somewhere from some server right so native means which is directly connected or directly inside the environment of your particular device that's what native is okay cleared guys everyone so if you compare flutter just gets a little upper hand over react native okay so now after doing all these things guys just head over and learn just write android studio download okay and here we go the first link okay and from here you can again just click on download android studio simple application stuff you have to just now i'm not going to download it because it will take a lot of time because it's also heavy so it will take 20 20 minutes so just download it once the file is there just like any game you install just double click agree to everything and install and once you're done with downloading android studio okay you can just go ahead and run it so just run android studio now first of all android studio gives you all the basic support that you need second thing it will also help you in creating emulators now guys what are emulators for the people who don't know what exactly is an emulator so guys emulator is nothing but a copy of your phone that you can run in your pc now not exactly of your phone a phone that you can run in your pc like a simulator something that's not real but gives you a feel of real so that's what an emulator is right so it will help you to build a phone in your pc where you can run your applications because you cannot run the applications that you create in your phone directly because sometimes it might cause issue what if the application causes some problem and that causes problem in your real device that's why we always test our applications on emulator but it's not like that that you cannot test it on real phones i'll also show you at the end of this course or in between how to run your application that you have built in your real phone but till then we'll be using virtual phone so and studio helps you to set up that virtual phone it behaves exactly like your normal phone but it's just you cannot touch it that's the only thing so a yeah, virtual phone simulator emulator whatever you'd like to call it now guys let me just change the resolution so that i can show you how to set up the emulator if you are new 
to Android Studio. So let me just because I think you cannot read it right completely. So let me just change the resolution for a second. Okay. So where can I do it? Yep. I think I can go for for a second. Yes. So guys, now I hope you can see it. Everyone, is it visible now? Better than before? For some time I'm changing it. Now see. Here, I don't want to create any projects, nothing. I don't want to do anything in this case. What I only want to do is click on this more actions. Okay. And here, just go this virtual device manager. Okay. This is where you can create emulators. Just click on it and it will open a window that looks like this. Now you can see I have already created one device, but I'll show you how to do it from scratch. So in your case, it might not be here. Okay. Now, Create device. Now, what do you want? Do you want to create a TV or Wear OS or tablet? In this case, I'm only focusing on phone. So click on phone. Now select any particular device that you would like from here. Okay. So anything is fine. So you can just select Pixel 5. In this case, just select Pixel 5. And then next. Now, after that, which OS, like it's definitely Android, but which version do you want in that? Do you want Pi, Oreo, Nogat? marshmallow in this case see i have already downloaded q but if you want you can download oreo but it will take a little time around five minutes because it will download the whole oreo environment so in this case i have already downloaded q i'm going to use that but in your case you can download any one that you want download the a little older one don't directly download the new one because a lot of people are not even using it till now right so the older version like nogat they might be having 100 percent reach because all the people don't have directly a new android phone right so whatever you develop don't always develop it for the new version also consider the older versions okay so in this case q i have downloaded just i'll select that and next now here you can give any name to your device i'll just keep it pixel 5 you can give any name whatever you'd like and after that if you want you can just go to show advanced settings and here you can see how much ram you want to give it how much vm heap you want to give it how much internal storage basically you're creating a phone think of you creating a phone now for a virtual device, whatever they give you, depending on your PC, it is the recommended setting. So you can go on with it. But if you want to give it more RAM, let's say you're developing a game or something like that, and you want to test it in your virtual device, so you can give it a little more RAM or something like that. Okay. But for now, depending on your PC's RAM, they give a proper RAM to it. Okay. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So all the settings that you get are perfectly fine. No need to worry about it, but you can read about it afterwards when you create your own emulator and after that just click on finish and here we go you can see it's created pixel 5 api 29 and then you can just click on this button see this run button click on it and it will open an emulator for you simple it will take a minute because emulator opening always takes time here we go you can see that right a big phone so it's opening the emulator it takes time it always takes a minute or something like that depending on the pc only for the first time it takes time after that it's completely fine. And guys, see, I know it takes a little time. Like we are not yet into Flutter coding, but this is important because a lot of time you'll understand coding, but this is where people face problem setting up the emulator, setting up the project, setting up Flutter project is very important. So I hope you're understanding all the things till now. This is the last step. Now we are directly going to go ahead to Flutter project. So guys, all clear till now, no confusion. Everyone. All set, please confirm me once guys, I'm not getting any answers come on quickly tell me all clear till now understood the installation basic path get the sdk extract it okay set up the path run flutter doctor install all the basic applications like vs code and all that install android studio create one emulator and that's it now i don't know this emulator is taking a little time so i will use the emulator that i have and i'm also going to change the resolution because this phone is looking very big so i hope it closes soon sometimes it takes a little time okay and i'm also going to change the resolution just give me a minute this emulator is causing a little issue now please close yes close the program i think it hanged while opening so i don't know something happened maybe i want it to close and sometimes this will happen guys definitely for you as well this might happen someday okay i hope it doesn't happen mm. yep sorted done 
and now let me quickly change the display again So on next class, please teach us using VS Code with an additional similarity. Yes, yes, definitely I'll try because VS Code also gives you extensions for it. Okay, now it's fine. Perfect. Close all windows. Yeah, finally done. Okay, where is my resolution again? Change it back to normal. Yeah, thank you for waiting, guys. Let's go back and now let's open VS Code. And let me show you how to create a Flutter project. Okay. And see, guys, when you create a what do you say emulator for first time, it might take time and it might cost something like this. I didn't wait; I closed it in between only, so no issues. So, guys, let's go. Let's start. So now, in VS Code, once you come in, first of all, I would suggest you to install one very important extension. Actually, two important extensions. Okay. The first extension that you need here is something called as Flutter. This is a very important extension. It will help you to run emulator, run Flutter commands directly in your VS Code so that you don't have to do anything outside. So this is very important. You have to install this. See Flutter from Dart code. I already have it. Okay. And one more thing that you need here is the Dart extension. Okay. So also this one. I also have it. You can see that. Okay. So you need these two extensions. Flutter and Dart, both from Dart code. Okay. Once you have it, just press Control Shift P. It will open the command palette of your Flutter, sorry, of your VS Code. And there you can see we have Flutter new project here. But you can also type it Flutter, and see you get this Flutter new project. Okay. Just enter. Now it will ask you, what do you want to do? Do you want to create an application, module, package, plugin? What do you want to create from Flutter? I want to create an application. Please generate a new fresh project for me. Okay. So application. And now where do you want to do it? So let's say in our case, we'll do on desktop. And let's call it um what do you say? F L U A P P. So flu app or something like that. Or I'll call it Flutter app. Okay. And select a folder on desktop, that's fine. Oh come on. What am I, what am I doing? I want to do it on desktop. Okay, fine. Here only. And now here we give name. So Flutter app. That's it. And enter. It will take one minute now to create a project for you. That's it. So here we go. Your project is created, guys. You have all these folders and files. You can see that. And don't worry, I'll also explain this to you. Don't worry about that. But now, before we move ahead into Flutter and see everything how it works. You can see, right? There is some code written here. Okay, there is one file open called as main.dart, and this is the most important file that runs initially. And you can see there is some code written here, right? Something like void main, then you have class and object. That means if it is a code, it is some coding language, but it is kind of looking like C, C or Java, but it's not that. Flutter is made in a language called Dart. Which is kind of similar to C. Some things are similar to Java, and a lot of things are similar to JavaScript. That's why I said if you know any of these languages, Flutter learning Flutter will be very, very easy for you. So it has a lot of features like C. It has a lot of features like JavaScript and some features like Java as well. So the programming language name is Dart. And tomorrow's session will be completely dedicated to this. The first half of tomorrow's session will be learning Dart only. So I'll basically show you how Dart works, how can how to write conditions loops arrays all of that objects in dart so that our future sessions can be much more easier so tomorrow's focus will be completely on dart but for now we're not focusing on the language i'll show you some basic things we'll run your first step and we'll just set up the flutter is that clear guys so dart is a language that flutter uses okay which kind of looks like c plus plus and java now leave this code let's run this project and let's see what kind of app it is opening because by default, Flutter gives you an app. When you create a Flutter project, it by default gives you an app. This whole thing is an app. So let's see. And to run it, guys, you can see here in your VS Code, right now I have Windows. Okay. That means if you run this app right now, it will create a Windows application for you. I don't want that. I want to get a mobile application. So select the emulator that you have created. You can see, right? We get the option of the emulator that we have created. So do you want to run it on Windows? 
do you want to run it on chrome so the same project can behave as a windows application the same project can behave as a web application as well okay but i want to run it on a mobile phone so i'll select this pixel 2 api 30 so select it first of all it will open the emulator and then run this project there okay wait I have the emulator, but the problem is it's opening my old project. Let me start it from scratch again. So here we go again. And yep, let's see now. And here we go. See, it's opening. I hope you can see the mobile phone. So now it's opening. It will take a little time, guys. Don't close it in between now because otherwise, again, it will cause the same issue. And whenever you're working with Android or something like that, your emulators always take time. Either the second option is always mobile phone. Okay. So that's it, guys. And so now, guys, you have it here. Your emulator is open. You can see it works exactly like a mobile phone. So for all the guys seeing it for the first time, don't worry. You cannot use it like a real mobile phone, but yeah, it behaves like it in, to some extent. Now, emulator is open. Now just go on this project and press F5. Here we go. Now it will build this project build the apk and run it on that emulator okay so you have to wait for a minute and the so see guys if you don't have emulator the best is your phone so i'll show you how to do it on phone don't worry tomorrow i'll also show you how to do it on phone okay why is taking so much time today it's already running it's still not and here we go guys our app is running and see got it so by default this app is producing this output See that guys, everyone, let me just put it on this side so that we can see both side by side. And let me also just make them a little, little smaller like this. Okay, so by default, your this app is producing this output. And you can see it, right? A simple uh, app. with a simple button here and if i click on it you can see the counter is changing one two three four five six a simple bar here on top and simple text now i can do changes in it and i can start basically changing the output and creating my own app is that clear guys everyone understood or not please confirm me this basic code okay now i can do anything here like for example can go here and change this color theme so i can say amber just save it and it will perform a hot reload and on the spot you can see the changes right and you can start building in this same stuff okay but what we are planning to do is we'll simply go and remove this whole code we don't need it and we'll start from scratch okay is that clear guys okay now Understand even if you want to start from scratch, the first thing that you need is you have to import the material dot dot because it will give you the material theme and all the elements that you need. Okay, now before we start, guys, I want to talk about one thing very importantly right now. That is Flutter is all about something called as widgets. Everything that you see is widget, a button, an image, a bar, a text. Anything that you see, it's a widget, guys. Flutter is nothing but a tree of widgets. That means when you make a Flutter app, you're just making a tree of widgets and that is producing output for you. Just like HTML, guys. Tags. So you have div tag inside that you put image tag inside that you put some other tag, right? You have div inside that you put P. So your output is nothing but a collection of HTML tree. Just like that here, you have widget tree. So everything that you create is a widget and you can also create your own widgets. Exactly, like elements in web dev here, we have widgets. So button, text, everything is just widget. And that's what we have to learn. How to create widgets, how to format them properly, how to, uh, like, what do you say, use them, and how the output will look like. That's what Flutter says. Okay, that's it. Everything in Flutter is widget. Okay, is that clear, guys? And the whole thing is written in Dart. Don't forget that as well. Okay, so as you can see, I have removed everything now. And again, guys, if you want to learn more about it, like even after sessions, if you ever want to learn more about it, you can always go. Uh, let me see. Now the site has changed a little, but. 
you can all search for widgets here let's see where does it take us yep here we go so you can always come here and see everything flutter documentation is one of the best documentations available so you can always come here and you can see the basic code and how it works and you can start using it in your own apps okay so you can come here and see is it clear guys but again i'm showing you from scratch so no need to worry but in future you can always come here okay so now then let's go ahead let's close this and now this material dot dot package gives you all the material widgets or all the basic widgets that you need to build your apps okay and right now i have removed everything void min is the function that is called initially so whenever your app is built for the first time void min is the function that is called and it has a run app global function in flutter you have a global function run app that actually runs your first widget okay so everything is a widget your first application is a widget and everything inside it is a widget so your application your screen that you see it's a widget inside that the app bar is widget inside that the button is also widget so now then first of all let's create one widget that we need right now and to create a first widget that you need just search for st now here you get two options do we want to create a state full widget or do you want to create a state less widget for now stateless widget is fine when i say stateless widget guys it's basically a immutable widget that means in that widget data is not continuously changing okay that means it is like a screen that is fixed i'm not going to i'm not planning on to change change any data i'm not planning planning on to change the ui of the application when i click somewhere i'm not planning on to do that it's just a fixed screen so that's a stateless widget no data is going to change on the ui so for now stateless widget and you can see it creates a simple class for you is that clear guys and now here cut this and give it a name so i'm going to call it my app okay or you can call it anything and then you use the same my app here so you tell run app that's initially load this widget that is my app you tell your run app that initially load this widget which is my app because i have created that here you can see and every widget that you create or that is created already has a build method build is the method that generates the widget and whenever your data changes or whenever the application re-renders this build is the method that is called to repaint the screen so build method is very very important is that clear guys everyone so that's the basic stuff okay so why isn't emulator changed after it deleted the because i haven't saved it yet once you press control s and save the code the emulator will change okay now then the first thing that i need here is return material app okay so material app that's what i want okay now guys let me just teach you some basics here okay and inside that there is a property so every widget so but see guys your my app is a widget that you have created okay my app is a widget that you have created inside that material app is one more widget that i'm going to use i'm using to create the screen for me now material app has a property called as home in which i'm going to pass one more widget now right now what widget i'm passing is the most famous screen building widget called as a fold okay you can see guys every widget is looking like a function so scaffold again brackets like that okay scaffold is the most famous screen building widget and inside that you simply have properties like for example app bar and you can put like an app bar here so i'm telling that scaffold screen building widget that you, i want you to have a app bar and then here i'm passing app bar widget in, in which i can mention how i want it to look like okay so here i can simply pass title and in that title if i want to pass text i'll pass a text widget and inside that i can mention my first app and now guys let's save it and see do we have any output changes or not save it and see that guys my first app so i have a screen see understand this run app runs my widget called as my app so this widget is running it is loading the material app which is helping me to build a material theme screen and inside that scaffold widget is building my screen and it's having a app bar an app bar is having a title of my first app and you can see everything is a widget app bar scaffold material app every function that you see here is kind of a widget okay and comma here is used to separate the widgets just like you use semicolon right in coding languages to separate lines comma here is used to separate widgets but this trailing comma is not important but we always put it for better formation that's all is that clear guys 
because comma is here because it is thinking that you might have one more widget after it that's why they put that comma but if you don't have it you can remove it but possibly even if you have it doesn't cause any issue so is that clear guys everyone getting the point of how it is working guys please tell me are we clear till now so now i can go here i can put body okay and in the body i can let's say put a text widget in this case and let me put, just put like hello see now can you see this hello nothing is padded you can see here right see this hello let me just make this a little little bigger so that you can see it uh not this big this is too big okay come on give me that button okay can you see that hello guys can you guys see that hello everyone see so nothing is padded only the app bar was styled now we have to style it everything else we have to style the better thing about scaffold is it helps you to it easily gives you all the widgets to create a title bar then the body section can contain this now see it also gives you this floating action button directly okay and then you can create a floating action button widget here like this okay and you can simply have i forgot the icon one but let's see what it gives you by default let me see that okay i think i'm forgetting about the icon so let me just get it from here just to show you for now floating action button flutter something like that and just get it from here it will look very simple yep something like this on press is a function yes i just wanted this child yep so right now i don't want to do anything on pressed so just a basic function i'll leave it blank function but I, what i want is i want it to have an icon so child an icon so see icon is also a widget here so icon i can put icons dot whatever icon i want so in this case let's i put add so it will give me a plus icon there let me show you okay comma i forgot here we go save it and see see that guys you got a simple button here so that's what scaffold does child is a property so guys this is what we, now understand this is what we have to learn how many widgets are there which widgets have which property like for example see scaffold widget has a property called as app bar in which you can pass a app bar widget to create this then it has a body property in which you can pass any content that you want here then it has a floating action button property in which you can pass a floating action button widget which has this now floating action button widget has two properties like multiple properties but right now we're using two that is on pressed and child in child you can pass any icon that you want to display here see i'm displaying add right now okay you can display any icon like add is the one icon but you can display anything if you get that option see a lot of icons are here so whatever you want i don't know maybe let's say uh do we have any pen pencil icon let me see okay let's let's just put this any icon let's see see it's a different icon now so that's what you can do any icon that google provides that flutter provides you can use it okay so there is a certain way of writing all this and we have to learn that only now you can also on pressed you can just go ahead and do print hello now i'll see this will work once i do print hello see this will work focus on this debug console guys i click see that it printed hello so when i click i am handling event see three times printed hello see that everyone but if i don't want to print hello i can also do some other stuff i can go to some other screen or i can open a box or whatever i would like i can do that so that's what we can do these are the things we can do is it clear guys everyone and it's very easy once you start understanding it it's very easy you have to just learn how widgets work so guys are we cleared so all of this is fixed i am not using anything it's all fixed it's all defined okay that scaffold will have app bar material app will have a home property floating action button will have on pressed and child so this is what basics of flutter looks like now guys don't think that we have started till now because we still have to learn dart first 
the basics of that that we'll learn tomorrow and after that we'll move ahead and start learning so basically in the first half tomorrow we'll we can complete that easily so it's from 6 30 to 7 or 7 10 first on the first three days it will be learning basic flutter on the last day we'll be doing the project setup second last day sorry and on the last day finally we'll be making a project so tomorrow i'll also give you the poll four options again as always you select what project do you want to make and we'll make it on the last day okay okay we'll see let's see if we have that much time i'll also definitely show you how to connect your flutter app to firebase definitely why definitely okay so guys i hope you guys understood all the basics of flutter the most important thing is setup because that's where a lot of people fail they basically know how to code flutter but the setup is kind of sometimes intimidating so i hope you guys understood and i'll also give you a future path of this what other things you can learn and that much will be enough flutter is very easy for starters it's very easy okay so guys i really hope that you guys understood all the things that we learned today i really hope that you guys enjoyed the session but the actual magic starts from tomorrow when we learn dart and when we also start learning the layout system and then click events and different different things scroll slide all that stuff and finally to the final project today was all about setup introduction and running your first app creating emulators again i think kind of boring initially but i hope you guys enjoyed it okay so that's it guys that's it for today